In this video, we're going to go over the different types of vertebrae found in our spinal column. So this big one is a lumbar. The next size down is the thoracic. And I say the lumbar kind of looks like a moose and the thoracic kind of looks like a giraffe, okay, when you look at it. And then these three are all cervical vertebrae. Okay, so we're going to push them out of the way for a second so I can go over some details of the lumbar and thoracic. Okay, a couple things that are really obvious on these guys are these things sticking off the side. And these things sticking off the side on both of these vertebrae are referred to as transverse processes. Okay, transverse process. Transverse process. I think of it as like kind of the ears sticking off. And then what I refer to sometimes in class as the nose sticking off, this pointy thing here, is the spinous process. And the thoracic vertebrae has that as well, the spinous process. This thick solid part is the body. Okay, this one also has a body. And those are the markings that you need to know on these two vertebrae. Moving over to the cervical vertebrae, you can see that those look much different than um, those other two, the lumbar and the thoracic. Okay, specifically, something that you may notice are these holes on either side that are only found on cervical vertebrae. Okay, and those are holes are called transverse foramen. Okay, and they're passageways for blood vessels going up to the brain. Okay, and the one thing about the cervical vertebrae is that yes, you need to know C, the C1 and the C2, but then you also have to be able to identify just a regular old generic cervical vertebrae. Okay, and we do that first by noting these transverse foramen that are only found in cervical vertebrae. So this guy right here is the C1 atlas. Okay, C1 atlas, transverse foramen, and then these smooth areas here, you can see they look a little different than the other side, but this area here is the occipital, referred to as the occipital facets. Okay, the occipital facets articulate with the occipital condyles on the occipital bone on the skull. Okay, and this vertebrae allows for the yes movement, so yes, okay, nodding your head up and down. Okay, so this is the C1 atlas. This vertebrae has a protrusion sticking up, and this is the C2 axis. This bone is the C2 axis. You can see it has the transverse foramen, but it also has this protrusion sticking up like a thumb. And this is referred to as the dens, also known as the odontoid process. Okay, the dens or the odontoid process. Okay, so this is C2 axis. You see transverse foramen, transverse foramen, dens, also known as the odontoid process. And of course, we have a, a spinous process there as well. <clears throat> and this last one is neither a C1 or C2. It's one of the other five uh, C, uh, cervical vertebrae that are there in our neck, okay? And this is just referred to as a cervical vertebrae. You can see it does have a small body to it, but it also has those infamous transverse foramen, okay? And this is just a cervical vertebrae. You don't have to be specific on this one. You will have to be specific on these two on the test. Okay, so just to compare all of them together, you have, starting at the top, you have the C1 atlas, occipital facets, transverse foramen. You have the C2 axis, the dens, has a spinous process. It also has those transverse foramen. This is just a cervical. You have a body, a spinous process, and then you have the two transverse foramen. And note that these guys do not have transverse foramen. Okay, you have thoracic, body, spinous process, transverse process, lumbar, body, transverse process, spinous process. Thanks for listening.